Hello, uh, my name is Arjan Osturk, and I'm a PhD student in computer science at University of California, Irvine. And today I will talk about the Terminator, thermal residue attacks on, uh, thermal residue attacks against password on external keyboards. Uh, this is joint work with uh, Tyler Kaxmarek and uh, Gene Sudik from University of California, Irvine. Let's first discuss a common scenario. Let's assume that you are working at a shared workspace and you arrive at work in the morning and then you go to your desk and workstation, enter your password. Hopefully your uh, workstation is password protected and you enter your password. And then while you're uh, waiting for the login process to finish, either you get bored or uh, uh, login process finishes, you check a few emails, you click, uh, t you click the mouse a few times, then a colleague comes in and calls you to a meeting or to just get some coffee. Or you just decide to uh, step away on your own to get some coffee or go to the bathroom or something like that. And you might be security conscious and uh, you might lock your computer and this actually looks like uh, everything is fine. You did everything by the book. And by locking your computer, you prevented any lunchtime attacks. But is there actually a problem with uh, this scenario? And the answer is yes. And the problem is you didn't wear your oven mitts. And the reason for that is uh, or any or wearing any other thermal insulator is uh, humans are warm blooded and we actually leave thermal residues on things with which we come in contact and these include keyboards and the keyboards are mostly made of plastic and they are uh, poor conductors and uh, they retain heat for a while and you can see an image here uh, password actually here is password and you can clearly see the keys pressed on this image which says that this might be actually an attack surface. And related work on this area mainly focused on uh, recovering pins, four digit pins mostly. And first work by Zalewski on cracking says and Mori et al did some work on um, comparing material composition of the target and uh, camera distance uh, using a uh, thermal camera and they also worked on some different uh, data analysis methods. In addition, Wodo and Hanslick has shown that uh, there are multiple devices that might be vulnerable to uh, thermal, thermal residue attacks. And there is also some work on uh, mobile devices to mostly uh, recover screen lock patterns. But there has been no systematic investigation of thermal residues on external keyboards and especially for passwords. This was our m main motivation uh, to do this research and work. And we discovered or uh, we defined an attack which is Terminator and it's uh, also known as coffee break attack. It uh, comes with two flavors. The opportunistic one is uh, the victim steps away after typing their passwords on their own accord and the orchestrated one, there's an accomplice which draws the victim away and then the attacker can take the thermal picture of the keyboards and then um, evaluate the results and uh, image it gets. So we actually have two videos that describes this uh, attack in, uh, in a more visual way. The opportunistic pyramid attack is exactly what has happened. The victim is offered to share the open space, lock in, and then shortly thereafter, for whatever reason, lock out the perhaps to refresh the coffee. Notice this, the adversary will seize the opportunity. They will use the thermal camera to record the residual heat from the victim's login, and once that's done, Return to their terminal. They can review their collected data at any time after this point. This was the opportunistic version of the attack, and there is the orchestrated one. The 
orchestrated a major attack is a little more involved. Seventh thing for the victims to get up and leave their own accord, the accuracy of the employees in the comments. This accomplice actively lures the victim away. Once they're gone, it's business as usual. The adversary uses their thermal camera to record the thermal residues of the victim's type. Once that's done, just like before, they are able to review the recorded data at any later time. So we had some questions in mind uh, about this attack. For example, how dangerous are these thermal side channel based attacks? And what is the realistic attack window? Because that's going to play an important role. And what does attack success actually require? Does it depend on users' physical attributes, for example, fingertip size and shape and pressure, applied pressure while typing the key? Or does it depend on password strength? comparing weak passwords to uh, strong passwords? Or does it depend on typing style, hunt and pack versus touch typing, which we'll go into more detail? And uh, does it depend on keyboard type, brand and model? And we did experiments to actually uh, get answers to these questions. Uh, our attacker uh, ha was a uh, moderate attacker which has access to a uh, mid-range thermal camera. In our case this was a Floor SC620 and it cost around $1500. And it has a thermal imaging frequency of 1 hertz. It can take uh, one image every second. And it looks like actually a, a video recorder basically. And this camera when we compare it to other options in the market which cost around $25,000 and $100,000. It's a pretty moderate attacker model. And we did experiments. This was our um, experiment setting. Uh, you can see the uh, thermal camera perched on, on top of the uh, tripod on top of the keyboard. And we designed a two stage experiment. In the first stage we recruited 31 subjects and each entered 10 passwords on four different keyboards. And we took images of these keyboards up to one minute and uh, at the end we had 60 images. Some of these passwords were weak like password, football and I love you which we gathered from um, recent data dumps and some of them were strong. Uh, they were randomly generated by us and they had uh, different lengths. 8 characters, 10 characters and 12 characters. And these passwords were entered on four popular keyboards, one Dell, HP, Logitech and ASIO. Here's a sample video uh, that uh, images actually added together and how it looks. You can see that the password here is actually password. And even in that five second loop, you can still see that in the last few tens of seconds, you can still see a few keys. But how do we actually quantify the uh, attack success? For that we designed another experiment, uh, the stage 2, which had 8 non-expert subjects acting as adversaries and they were shown uh, 150 thermal, thermal recordings of um, thermal recordings in random order. And they were asked to identify lit regions. They were not asked to guess passwords. We just asked them to uh, see, think uh, which regions are actually lit on the thermal images. And let's take a look at the results. We should probably first discuss about our distance metric here uh, to the actual, between the actual password and the uh, set of keys that our stage 2 subjects were able to get from the thermal images. Here we have for distance calculation between those two, we summed up the number of missed keys by our stage two subjects and number of misidentified as pressed keys. And the time here shows that the latest time that this distance was, was uh, the number given here. An example, here we have football in the first part. 
and we can see that the first bar uh, is D equals zero, which means that all keys in the password were able to be were able to uh, be recovered by our stage two subjects, and they were able to do that until the 18th around 18th second. For I love you, this was around 30th second. For password, this was around 20th second. For alphanumeric passwords, the results are similar. We are just uh, showing these in two, cat two different images for ease of viewing. Uh, for example, for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, full recovery was around 20 seconds, and Jordan 23 around 20 seconds, and password around 20 seconds. For one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, th that was an interesting case. Since each key is actually pressed twice, it helped our stage two subjects uh, identify which keys were pressed for a longer period of time, around 45 seconds. When we take a look at the uh, results for secure passwords, we can see that the full recovery time, which is D equals zero, the blue bars, uh, is drops actually, it drops compared to the other ones, compared to insecure passwords. And the reason probably for that is, since these are actually randomly generated passwords, they have not been seen by our stage one subjects. It took longer time for them for them to find the keys and then uh, press those keys. And the for the first password, this was around 15 seconds, 10 seconds, and around 15 seconds. And while going over the results, we discovered that also the typing style is one of the differences between, uh, created differences between the success of our stage two subjects. For example, you can see here a Hunt and Peck typist typing Jordan 23. And every key press here is a key in the password. But when we take a look at a touch typist typing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we can see that there are additional keys ASDF, JKL, and semicolon, which are uh, usually used by touch typists. They perch their uh, hands on the home row, which are these keys. In addition to that, these actually thermal residues leak to other keys close by those home row keys and uh, created confusion for our stage two subjects. So when we compare these two styles, two typing styles, for alphabetical passwords, we can see a drop in full recovery in the blue bars. Uh, for football, it was around 25 to 30 seconds, but for touch typists, for touch typists, this, this dropped down to around 15 seconds. And there is a similar trend uh, for all these passwords uh, when we compare hunt and peck typists and touch typists. Also the same case for alphanumeric passwords, except one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, uh, we can see that other passwords actually full recovery time uh, were actually dropped. As mentioned before, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four is a special case that we see uh, since each key, each key is uh, typed twice, it's easier to recover. Also in our distance metric, we did not add the uh, home row keys as false because there's no way to understand whether they, those keys are actually pressed or those keys are there just because uh, the touch typists kept their hands on, the, on those keys. Also for secure passwords, we can see that full, full recovery time from, uh, for the first password uh, drops from 30 seconds to around 10 seconds. So all in all, our results were uh, entire, uh, if you, for password recovery, entire set of key presses, uh, our stage two subjects were able to uh, recover entire set of key presses as late as 30 seconds, and they were able to recover partial sets up to one minute, which shows the, that this attack is actually, can be successful. And 
When we compare typing styles, hand impact typists are especially vulnerable since every key they press is actually a key in the password. When we take a look at the data to see whether we can ga gather any ordering information, our stage two subjects did not, uh, were not able to uh, come up with uh, reliable or key press ordering information. And the possible reasons for this is uh, pressure, timing, and area dif differences of fingers and presses, and also combinations of all these factors. But we have dictionaries. For non-random passwords, we can describe a distance metric like one we did, and we can use that distance metric to compare the keys that we are seeing in the image to the passwords in, in a password dictionary. How do we mitigate, how do we prevent actually this terminator attacks? We can introduce chaff typing, typing extra keys while we are typing our passwords or swiping on the keyboard when we are done with typing our password. And in addition to that, we can consider keyboardless entry, key keyboardless password entry options. For example, using, using a mouse. Uh, displayed char characters are displayed on the screen, they are in random order, and we can pick these keys. Or we move away from passwords, which does not seem to be, uh, which, which probably is not gonna happen in the um, close future. And Another uh, option is for mitigation using long acrylic nails, gloves, or as we said before, oven mitts. Actually, we had one subject who had um, long acrylic nails and we were not able to see anything on the, uh, any of the thermal images that we gathered. Black hat sound bites. Uh, using plastic keyboards to enter password is even less secure than previously recognized. Post factum, which means that after the fact of uh, entering our password, thermal imaging attacks are realistic. And one of the reasons for that is uh, niche devices such as thermal cameras are becoming more mainstream and more accessible, which makes these attacks, uh, which makes these attacks more realistic now. And we should either stop using keyboards for password entry or abandon passwords altogether if possible. So further info can be found on the project website and our group at uh, UC Irvine is Sprout and the full paper is available on archive. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Questions? Um, first of all, great talk. Um, would you see something like modified keys such as shift or RGR actually make the password guessing process harder, harder since you don't know which keys were used for the modifier? It does, yes. Even if you see that shift is pressed, uh, you don't have much idea on actually which keys, which keys uh, were pressed with shift, so you might not, you, you don't get much enough information from that. Non-random fa passwords, we can use dictionaries uh, with uh, a distance metric. For random passwords, it is not easy to get the ordering information. Actually, for any password, it's not easy to get the ordering information from the thermal images. But as you said, uh, using a uh, permutation is might be actually uh, 
pretty big uh, space for, for random passwords. But one thing, uh, since we are considering the insider attacker here, an insider attacker can use other side channels to actually uh, improve their chances of getting uh, the random passwords too. For example, using acoustics to, uh, acoustic emanations to uh, have an idea on which keys are actually pressed and in which order. We actually did a few experiments with uh, key with laptops too, but as you said, since the CPU is actually right under the keyboard, it actually, even if you press a key, it is not easy to actually understand that key is, has been pressed. Also the same, same scenario applies if you have a um, smartphone. Those, those devices are pretty compact and everything is basically together. Under your screen you have your CPU which heats up the screen and also the screen actually heats up too. So it's not easy to understand uh, those keys have been pressed any, or any patterns that you're entering on your uh, smartphone. And one of the papers actually uh, worked on this area, they used cold boots. They just turn on the phone, they enter the pin and the swipe pattern or the swipe pattern and then they try to uh, get the uh, pattern or pin. And they were not able to get it in, in other way, like uh, your phone is uh, on for a long time then it's uh, probably not possible to uh, get the keys, swipe patterns and pins. <coughs> Higher precision camera uh, makes sense uh, than uh, that in the uh, demonstration. Uh, we used a camera that was around $1,500 used. Uh, we have not experimented with uh, more like a $25,000 and $100,000 camera. I am not sure actually how successful the attack is going to be, but if the sensitivity is pretty high, then you might have a chance of getting uh, more fine-grained thermal images so that you can uh, observe the keys better and maybe you might be able to get the ordering information. External keyboards, uh, one mitigation might be just swiping your hands after entering your password. That might be an option. Or uh, I think one of the one of the s solutions that we saw and it was actually p patented, I think, uh, like the heating up actually, the keyboard actually is heated up to the uh, maybe the finger temperature. So that even if you're actually pressing the key, then uh, you will not be able to see the key. But if you, for example, wash your hands and the temperature of your hands change, then you might still be able to uh, see the keys pressed. So you see them as a dropping Yeah, any, any change in the temperature actually uh, gives you a side channel on the password enter. Thank you all. Oh.